in today's show. We look ahead to Monday in the NBA. Some streaming targets as well. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds and lines than ever before. BetOnline is where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. And we're available on all platforms. Here's a platform. We're going to look at Monday's action. There are nine games on. So I'm going to tell you what I'm watching for in those nine games, plus some waiver stream options for category and points leagues. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) First game, the Clippers taking on the Cavs. This is a back-to-back for the Clippers. So we'll get a little bit more information come through um, after their game on Sunday. But we want to watch Luke Kennard because he had started to step up the two games prior to Sunday with over 30 minutes at the expense of Terrence Mann in that playing time. Can Kennard keep that up? I have my doubts. But let's see. This is a rotation that's always going to change and the priorities of the players seem like it's always going to change as well or how Ty Lue prioritizes the players more accurately. That seems like it's always going to change. So we always want to watch that. Also want to watch Ivica Zubat too. Again, the minutes become all over the place. Not, this is his last four games before Sunday. 19, 22, 27, 36. Like 22 minutes from Ivica Zubats is not 12 team worthy. 36 absolutely is. So which one is it? Like his numbers, they just, it's a big roller coaster as to where they fit. So what do we get from him against Cleveland? You'd think they'd have to play him some bigger minutes, but without Jared Allen, maybe that need isn't quite as high. It's going to be one for us to watch. He's still a 12 team league guy, but. The stability of his productions in question. For the Cavs, last game they were without Lowry Markkinen, so they started Kevin Love. He was pretty solid. And now we've got both, or well not both, actually all of Lowry Markkinen, Karis Levert, and Dean Wade, all questionable with Jarrett Allen out. If you lose Markkinen, Levert, and Wade, then there's a lot of opportunities for Osman, for Love, even say Lamar Stevens. If they all play, then Love gets squeezed. Wade definitely gets squeezed. It's going to be really hard to determine how to use this team. Like Love should be on a 12-team roster, but it could be either great for you Monday or really, really average. Also watch Darius Garland, whose last two games, he struggled a little bit with his shot. And he was shooting unbelievably efficiently prior to that. But the last two games have been a bit of a struggle. The minutes are great. The volume's really good. I expect him to still carry a gigantic load on this team, giggity. But is he um, going to suffer a little bit of that efficiency hit that we've seen over the last couple. Let's hope not, but it is something to worry about. The Blazers and the Hawks. Brandon Williams, he's going to start, would be the guess. He's going to play a lot of minutes, and he's probably going to chuck up a lot of shots and miss them. This is the concern with Williams for sure, Um, and that is the problem you're going to have on your fantasy team. Can you absorb a hit in probably both percentages? Because that's what he's going to do. The other bloke, I think, is way more important to look at, or more reliable to look at, I guess, is Trendon Watford who I expect will start once again with Justice Winslow out. He played 38 minutes last game. He's been around 30 for the last five games. He can be an interesting efficiency guy, defensive stats guy, rebound, out of position assist. I think he's a really, really good option. And he should be on a 12-team roster, is, um, is my thought. So let's hope that he is able to continue that level of play that we've seen from him over this last yeah. five games or so. Can he keep that level of play going? We Again, we certainly uh, we certainly hope so. And we want to watch that. We also want to watch Josh the Hitman Hart, who went absolutely bananas last game against the Wizards, but prior to that, had really struggled. You know, which Josh Hart do we get? For the Hawks, it is a back-to-back for them. I want to watch Fan of Pants, Kevin Herter. You know, can he continue to get those solid upper 20s, low 30s minutes? Will it come at the expense of Dillon Wright, as it has in the last two games? That's going to be key for his value. And then the Baptist, Johnny Collins, who's dealing with a finger issue 
and a foot issue. He's questionable for Sunday. I don't have an update whether he's playing Sunday yet, so I don't know whether he's going to play Monday. But irrespective of if he plays Sunday or not, we still want to watch whether he's available for Monday and how he looks, because he looked pretty bad in most of these games since he returned. He's had one good game and three stinkers. In fact, he hasn't gone over 25 minutes in three of the four, five, three of the four games since he's returned from injury, which is obviously a level of concern there for his value. The Nuggets and Sixers. Farton Will Barton is back, and he played well. He probably should be on a roster. He definitely should be on a roster. But his impact on guys like Monty Morris is, um, is important for us to note. Because Morris, without Barton, is great. With Barton, struggles. So we're going to get another look at that here. Also, the big stiffy, Bones Highland, really had a big performance last game, but only 19 minutes. I would love for him to get 25 and get them at the expense of Bryn Forbes or Austin Rivers, but it's just not happening. So he's always an option to take a flyer on to see where we go, but I don't really fully trust him to be a deployable 12-team league guy. For the Sixers, this is a back-to-back for Philadelphia. They're going to want to arrest or remove the stink of that loss against Brooklyn. They've got Orlando on Sunday. Denver here on Monday. Tyrese Maxi, we want to watch that because he really struggled against Brooklyn. His two games prior to that had probably been more the expectation, a little bit of a drop in efficiency, and you're expecting him to be a top 70, top 80 guy, I think is the realistic mode for him, rather than that top 20 guy that he was when Harden first arrived, or the guy that was dreadful against the Nets. He's neither of those two things. He's somewhere in the middle. So let's see how he looks in this matchup against Denver. And then also Matisse Thibel. Is there any chance? No. That we can rely upon him for anything more than defensive stats? No. But let's watch to see whether there is anything more in his game. There isn't. Let's see, can he do something efficiently? Can he score? Can he get some usage? Can he hit some threes? Probably no, 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 no. But we want to see it. Because otherwise, he's just going to consistently be reduced to being a defensive stats streamer. And I think that's what it's going to be. What it's also going to be, though, is it's time for Bilt Bar. Because Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. You want to get a protein bar because you want to be healthy. You don't want to be gouging on calories. You want to have something that tastes good and does something good for your body. Whether that's post-workout, post listen to this podcast, whatever it is. Built Bar is the answer for you. 17 grams of protein, 130 calories in most bars, plus their new marshmallow puffs. It's protein-infused marshmallowy puffy goodness in churro flavor or the lemon lemon pie cheesecake flavor. Whatever it is, there's great flavors there. So head to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and save yourself 15% off your order of Built Bar. Built Bar is built different. Hornets Thunder, PJ Washington Jr. is getting the starts, getting the minutes. As like with most of his career, though, the production's all over the shop. Can he put up a big game against the Thunder? Yeah, I would think it's a chance of that. I prefer him over Plumlee and Harrell, for sure. Still no Gordon Haywood, and he won't be back for a while. Lamelo Ball is annoying us, really. He has not gone over 31 minutes in six consecutive games. That's annoying when other blokes like Terry Rogier are playing like 39 and Bridges is playing 39. Like, we want a little bit more from Lamella. Can he stop being frustrating? That'd be great if he could do that. But it just hasn't been the case. For the Thunder, this is a back-to-back for them. We saw last time they played on Wednesday, which is ages ago, Aaron Wiggins put up some really big numbers. Is that real? Is his minute dominance 39 versus Pokyshevsky's Pokyshevsky 17? Is that Is that real? Are we going to see that discrepancy between their playing time? That makes Wiggins a guy you want over Pokashevsky. But if they both play 29 or 28 versus 24, then I want Poku. But 39 to 17 is a gigantic difference. So we want to see how Doug Knight uses those two and how the minutes distribute between those two guys. For the Timberwolves and the Spurs, Malik Beasley has been playing well enough. They've obviously got some injury concerns. Beverly and Vanderbilt missed the last game. Uh, Beverly with an ear contusion, whatever the hell that is. I know what it is, but how do you get an ear contusion? Beverly out there, that helps Beasley. Gave him some extra minutes. He's played 30 in the last three games. Malik, he's just a points and threes guy. But in 30 minutes, there's enough value in that. I also want to watch Jaden McDaniels, who last game fouled out, 24 minutes only. Has top 30 twice in the last five. But if Vanderbilt's out, there's another chance for 30 minutes for McDaniels. And he can bring some scoring with efficiency, hit some threes, block some shots. There is some value there, but it is a little bit up and down, as we've seen. For the Spurs, they should welcome back a ton of players who sat out last game, like DeJounte Murray, Keldon Johnson, and Jakob Pertl. They should all return. But Dougie McDirt may not, because McDirt had to leave that game on Saturday with an ankle problem. I don't know whether he plays. So I want to watch um, Devin Vassell. 
who has been all right. I wouldn't say he's been awesome. I'd say he's been all right. Probably still deserving of a roster spot in 12-team leagues, especially with this game on Monday. But I'd like to see something ramp up for him. I also want to watch see what they do with Jock Landau, because Landau was great. Played 35 minutes against the Pacers. Prior to that, he'd played 13 minutes in the two games prior. But is there a chance that he gets backup minutes over Zach Collins? Do him and Zach Collins just split those backup minutes? Is Landau going to be reduced to garbage time only? I don't know. He looked really, really solid in that game against the Pacers. Yes, it was against the Pacers. How's he going to fare against Carl Anthony Towns? Probably not as well. But let's see how he gets used here versus uh, a Zach Collins. Bulls and Kings. Second game back for the Rabbit Hunter. Be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. Um, and he was great. He had four steals in that first game. But that game also did not have Zach Levine. So how are the Bulls going to run their rotation of Desunmu, Caruso, Levine, Kobe White? Who's going to cop the hit if Levine plays? Levine is questionable. I think it'll be White, but I don't know that. So we want to see how that all gets uh, sorted out. For the Kings, Justin Holiday had to leave last game due to illness. Um, Sabonis missed last game for personal reasons. We don't have an update on whether they're available Monday. I would expect that Sabonis is, but for Holiday, I don't know. So we want to watch the Holiday, Mitchell, DiVincenzo, Lamb scenario. Even with Holiday leaving early, DiVincenzo played 17 minutes. Now those minutes make no sense. He went 29, 34, 27. All right, that's cool. 12 and 17. I can't figure that out. I, mean, I thought he played well in those big minutes. I can't figure that out. So is Holiday going to be that guy again? I don't know. Darren Fox is killing it. He's playing a ton of minutes, like a ton, like basically 40 a night. It's resulting in good numbers for sure. It's resulting in losses, but it's resulting in good individual numbers for Darren Fox. So let's hope for our fantasy sake that he can continue that. He's putting up some big ones, just enough to sucker us into drafting him in the third round next year and getting burnt once again. The Wizards and the Warriors. Corey Kispert's last couple of games have been good. They've been better. He's still nothing more really than a points and threes, guys. But if you don't get like a Malik Beasley, Kispert's 30 minutes or so. In fact, he played 39 against the Blazers. Yeah, there's a chance of 15 points, four or five threes in that. Maybe get some steals as well. KCP also playing really well. He is obviously a must-roster player. And if you don't have him on a roster, you probably should find a way to get him on there. But let's see if there's a way of him continuing this form. Well, for the Warriors, one of the biggest things we're watching for the entire day is the return of Draymond Green. How many minutes does he play? How does it impact John Kaminga? How does it impact Moses Moody, who's probably going to be close to out of the rotation? We still don't know whether Porter or Peyton or even Jim Wiseman are going to play. They could all return. I don't think Wiseman will, but you know, Iguodala won't. But Porter and Peyton, Porter's been out for a week with an illness. You would hope that he is ready to return. And how that impacts Draymond and Kaminga and all those guys, there's going to be some rotational changes there. The Bucks and the Jazz. Um, Serge Ibaka. Decent production the last couple. I don't really trust it long term and I wouldn't be you know, frothing over at all and Brook Lopez's return is coming maybe this week but let's see what Surge can do and how it impacts Punch Bob who played only 22 minutes Bobby Portis last game shot horribly and they do have at least another option now that when Portis does have some struggles that there's someone else they can go to that doesn't say we drop Portis because we don't but just watching the impact of Surge here well for the Jazz we do need to check on that status of Rudy Gobert he doesn't appear like he's going to miss after having that foot issue, looks like he'll be back on Monday. But if he's out, then we're really looking at Hassan Whiteside. And then Mike Conley should also return. But we also want to watch Jordan Clarkson, who dropped just a huge game, like 45 points with zero rebounds. That is the quintessential Clarkson game. That's great. With Ingles gone, he's been a 12-team league guy. But you've got to understand the deficiencies in his game overall. And he's not going to be able to score that 45 like he did last game. The Raptors and the Lakers is the last game of the day. For Toronto, I expect Fred Van Vliet to return. He missed last game due to a back-to-back -back and having knee soreness, but he should return. So what does that mean for Chris Boucher? Well, what we saw with Chris Boucher, Van Vliet's out 36 minutes. Van Vliet back 12. Van Vliet back 12. Van Vliet out 30. So that pattern should push him back into the 12 to 15 minute zone, making him unrosterable. But we want to watch to see whether that's the case. I also want to see whether Gary Trent can hit a shot. Like, just hit something. He had that one game where he had 40 points on 60% shooting, and every other game feels like it's been 29% for 13 points with one rebound and still getting two steals. 
It's frustrating. It's killing your field goal percentage. It's hurting your points. But his value is propping up with steals. Hopefully, hopefully we get a turnaround from Trenner here and some of these shots start going in because it's been pretty rough. For the Lakers, it is a back-to-back -back for them. Austin Reeves is playing well. Well enough to be a 12-team league guy? Well, at least in this situation, yeah. Like, stream him in. That's He has been putting up numbers and getting 30-plus minutes in three of the last four games. Also, Taylor Horton Tucker producing at an okay level. Good steals, some rebounds, some assists. Yeah, LeBron is listed questionable, and it is a back-to-back, -back, so LeBron could easily sit one of these games. Horton Tucker also dealing with his own ankle problem. So there's going to be some absences here for somebody to step up, and maybe it is Taylor, maybe it is Austin Reeves in these situations uh, for the Lakers with a back-to-back. -back. But we know what's back-to-back -back here. We're going to have back-to-back -back days of college basketball because the tournament is just around the corner. So for the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting in your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. BetOnline is where the game starts. Let's look at some stream options for Monday. No back-to-backs Monday, Tuesday, so we can't look at that. Um... Nine catch streamers. We've got Drew Eubanks, Isaiah Hartenstein, Kavon Looney, Onyeka Rakongwu, Brandon Williams, Nico Batum, Aaron Wiggins, Corey Kispert, Grayson Allen, and Austin Reeves. For deeper formats, CJ Allaby, Trey Lyles, Greg Brown, Javante Green, Cody Martin, Jermichael Green, Keon Johnson, Shake Milton, Damian Jones, and Isaac Okoro. Jones might be a 12 team stream if Sabonis is out again. And then for points leagues, We've got Roby, Watford, Eubanks, Brandon Williams, Looney, Baisley, Plumley, Pokushevsky, Vassell, and DeAndre Hunter. And that will do it for me today. I'll be back later on with a recap show of all of Sunday's action. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.